Hello and welcome to another fun-filled edition of Adam's Music Box, where today I want to talk about a band that I call the most exciting and interesting band in, in the world. Um, and that really could be applied to a lot of bands, but there was something about this band that just, it did something to me, it did something to everyone who came into contact with it. And this band is, of course, the Tony Williams Lifetime in all its various guises. So who was Tony Williams? Tony Williams was one of the most precocious and sought-after jazz drummers in the world in the 1960s. Uh, he became well-known for playing with the likes of Miles Davis and Herbie Hancock. But what really made him into this other thing, this ethereal creature of the drums, was when he formed his own band in the late 60s, the Tony Williams Lifetime. And it changed music forever. It didn't change music in the way that, oh, the Beatles came out of nowhere, supposedly, and are now on, on the top of the charts. It didn't change it in that sense. It changed the way that musicians think of the purpose of their own instruments. It changed the way that musicians write music and improvise music. And it changed the expectations of audiences regarding the internal dynamics of a band when it came to musicians listening to one another and playing off one another and improvising with one another. One thing that was unique about this band across all the various lineups of it were frankly the fact that they all of the musicians sort of did with their instruments things that you weren't supposed to do. Tony Williams played the drums the way that they're not supposed to be played. But when watching him, you think, wow, this is so much better than anything I've ever seen on the drums. Why don't all drummers play this way? In many ways, after Tony, the most important member of the early lineups of the band was Larry Young, the one of the greatest Hammond organists, possibly the greatest Hammond organist of all time. And he did things with the Hammond organ that you're just not supposed to do. And yet they were so amazing, so alluring, so mystifying, so attractive that you just have to say to yourself, why didn't everyone and why doesn't everyone play the Hammond organ like Tony Williams? And then, of course, there was John McLaughlin, a relatively young John McLaughlin on guitar, doing things on guitar that no one really ever did. And of course, there was Jack Bruce. Um, the finest electric bass player, frankly, certainly one of them uh, ever across so many genres, one of the most versatile and what a voice. Now, the first lineup of the band, which recorded the double album Emergency, uh, was a trio. It was Larry Young on organ, John McLaughlin on guitar, Tony, of course, on drums. Uh, but shortly after that album was released, you had a fourth member that was Jack Bruce. And that uh, that quartet recorded the second album, Turn It Over. Wonderful, wonderful stuff. And it's that lineup that performed on the West German television show Beat Club, um, which featured some of the most interesting bands in the broadly rocker fusion genre of that early 70s era. And that footage was thought to be lost forever because it never aired, but they are very good at um, music, at, um Radio Bremen, the company that produced Beat Club, um, this West German television and radio um, syndicate, if you will. And they went through and found the footage and uploaded it last year. Wow, wow, wow. Be sure to watch that footage. Amazing stuff. So then um, shortly after that, that classic lineup, if you will, broke up. Um, and it was down to the core two members of Larry Young on organ and Tony Williams on the drums. And this new lineup that came about um, resulted in the recruiting to the band of a new guitarist, Ted Dunbar, and a new bassist, Junie Booth. And this lineup played, sometimes augmented by other percussionists, um, did a lot of touring. You can see a bit of video um, of them, one from the Montreux Jazz Festival and one from Berlin in 1971 both pretty high quality per, uh, videos rather and the performances themselves are stellar and here when you've got a more laid back guitar player compared to McLaughlin you can really see Larry Young just dominating the band not in the sense of of ego even though we'll get to why that's um, an ironic statement soon but just in terms of the fact that his oceanic 
organ playing just really led the band in a sort of co-leader frankly environment with tony williams who was playing lead drums if you will the organ was sometimes playing rhythm and the drums were sort of acting as a stand-in for melody then they'd swap absolutely magical stuff do not miss that at all and then of course the lineup changed oh um pardon me um, that lineup released an album called Ego. And when you have a song called Some Hip Drum Shit, you know that it's going to be a good album. Next, the lineup changed again. And this time, Larry uh, left, Larry Young left. And he was replaced by two keyboarders, by Webster Lewis and by David Horowitz. And this album also contained um, a new external vocalist, this time a female vocal. And this was Laura Tequila Logan. Very, very good vocals from her. Her Bushler uh, was on bass, and Laura Tequila Logan also played a bit of guitar. And there were, of course, extra percussionists. And T uh, Tillman Williams, Tony's father, even turned up to play sax on one track. This album has been off of streaming services forever. It's never been on them. And it's somewhat hard to find, but clips of it exist on YouTube. Uh, CDs and records exist on eBay and Amazon. You definitely should check it out if you can. It is a fun album. Album. And it really does, even without Larry Young, preserve that beautiful chaos of that original lifetime. The record label, of course, dropped them off to that because they were too cool for school. But uh, another lost lineup of Lifetime got together. This was in Sweden, of all places, in 1974. And Webster Lewis um, was a hanger on, if you will, from the old Bums Rush era. Jack Bruce was back from that classic lineup, if you will. Laura Logan stayed on as vocalist, and a relatively young guitarist called Alan Holdsworth was on guitar. Now, this lineup never toured, and it never formally made an album, but a bootleg of some recording sessions they did in Sweden exists. Uh, sometimes it's sold as wildlife, sometimes it's sold as the Stockholm Sessions, sometimes it's sold as a bit of both. Check it out. It's available on YouTube. It's everywhere. It's really, really, really and I mean really good. And it was the following year when the next sort of lineup of Lifetime came to be, uh, what we usually refer to as the new Tony Williams Lifetime. And this, of course, featured Alan Holdsworth, who had been in this sort of temporary Swedish experimental lineup. It also featured someone who I've done a video on here, one of the great session jazz and pop pianists of all time, Alan Pasqua, on the keyboards, and a wonderful bassist who could slap the hell out of that thing, played with everyone from Michael Jackson to Stevie Wonder to Diana Ross to Marvin Gaye and The Temptations. Wonderful guy, did so many sessions. And this was Tony Newton. And you can really tell he's a pro. And they released an album that in some ways is the most accessible of all of the Lifetime albums. Uh, and this was called... Um, having a Joe Biden moment, folks. This was called Believe It. And every song is a winner. The writing is so good. This album was a bit more song-based than improv-based, whereas the early lineups were very much songs that grew out of improvisation. These were songs, these were, you know, strictly written songs that allowed Holdsworth and Pasqua to really demonstrate their soloing abilities. And again, each song a winner, really well produced, the next year, that same lineup released Million Dollar Legs, another really good album, but maybe not quite as sort of pure, if you will, as the previous one, some would say. Really, really good. Um, the concept then of Tony Williams' lifetime became a bit diluted. It basically became when Tony Williams isn't playing sort of straight up jazz and when he's playing with interesting guests, we'll call it lifetime. Even before Believe It was out, he did something that they sometimes called lifetime. And these were a live set of concerts that featured Jean-Luc Ponty on violin, the great Chick Corea on piano and Chick's collaborator from Return to Forever, Stanley Clark on bass. That same lineup minus Ponty also also did some live gigs with Stan Getz. Wonderful stuff. And in that spirit of let's have a chaotic, uh, a sort of ever-changing <laughs> Tony Williams lifetime, there was an album uh, from 78 called The Joy of Flying with a wonderful cast of characters, um, different on every track. You had Jan Hammer, you had Herbie Hancock, Brian Auger, Ronnie Montrose, and George Benson. Wow, wow, wow. The great Tom Scott, Cecil Taylor, Paul Jackson on the bass, Stanley Clark on the bass. 
Mario Cipollina on the bass, who would later go on to form or co-found co co rather Huey Lewis and the News. Uh, and you also had David Sanborn and Michael Brecker on the album, just a really who's who of late 70s jazz. And then he did another album um, in 1980, which wasn't really strictly a Tony Williams album, but it was called Play or Die. And it was a really good album. Uh, it featured, um, it, it was a trio format, essentially. And it featured, um, obviously, Tony Williams on the drums, Tom Grant on the keyboards, and someone that you might rec recognize, rather, if you're a Frank Zappa fan, Patrick O'Hearn on bass. Not strictly a Lifetime album as such, but within that spirit of Lifetime. With all of that timeline taken care of, I recommend all of it. Every single thing I mention. Because it is all so exciting, it is all so unique, and it really does show that there are good bands, there are great bands, and then there are bands that are just out of this world. And I would say that the Tony Williams Lifetime, in all of its lineups, but of course the original one is the one that introduced it to the world, it was cosmic, absolutely amazing, virtuosic, insanely good, and downright insane at times. Definitely check it out on record and on video. Like, subscribe, and we will see you next time. Take care.